Hi, this is Tim Jones from Accelerate Computer Training in sunny Long Beach, California with another tip to help accelerate your learning and productivity. If you've ever built an organization chart in Visio Pro where you started with your employee data in a list or an Excel spreadsheet like this one, you were probably disappointed like I was to find out that the shapes in the org chart aren't linked to the source data. In this video, I'm going to show you the few extra steps that you can take to make it so that the shapes in the org chart are linked to the source data in your Excel sheet or list, so that if you ever update the employee names or salaries or phone numbers or any of the other data you have in your Excel sheet, the org chart shape data will update as well. The first step is to create and save your Excel sheet. Now, it needs to have certain columns. First off, it needs to have some kind of unique identifier column. I called mine employee ID, where each employee, each person in the org chart, has a unique identifying number. That's really key. The next one, supervisor ID, is what I called mine, although those two names are not, um, not uh, critical. You, don't, you can call them whatever you want. But the role of the supervisor ID column here is where you identify who manages or who is the supervisor for the current employee. So here I've got Bob Wynn. He is employee number 101. He reports directly to employee number 100, Nancy Osborne. So this number here indicates that Bob Wynn is the employee of Nancy Osborne. Likewise, uh, Dennis Estrella down here, employee number 106, he reports to employee number 102 up here, Brenda Swanson. If you have first name and last name data separated out, which is almost always a best practice. That's fine, you can leave it, but you'll want to create a field called, or a column called name. That name column can be a calculation that concatenates the first name in cell C2 with a space surrounded by quotes, and then the D2, the last name, giving you a nice full name without having to manually type those, uh, that data again. Now notice that I've made the name column bold. These five columns need to have these specific names. Visio's org chart assumes that you're going to have these five columns in every org chart. So even if you're not going to, it's going to end up creating those fields for you in the org chart. You might as well have them even if you don't have data for any or some of the rows. Notice I've only got a few email addresses in here, but I'm still going to use the email column. Any additional data like hire date or salary is also fine, and the names are uh, totally subjective, up to you. But you'll find, you'll find that you avoid a lot of problems if you do have at least these five columns, plus those very key fields that I mentioned earlier, employee ID and supervisor ID. Once you've created and saved your Excel sheet, close it up. Otherwise, it will interfere with you trying to use it in Visio as the basis of your org chart. The next step is to go into Visio and create your org chart. It'll just be a static org chart at this point, based on the Excel data, but not linked to the Excel data. In Visio, click File, New, and click Organization Chart, the template that you need to use to build an organization chart. If you see two of them here, use the one that has the wizard associated with it. One click here. I'll stay with US Units and Create and the org chart wizard appears. First, we want to create our organization chart from information that's already stored in a file or database. The second option is interesting, but since we've already done the work of creating the file with the columns and rows of data in it, we don't need to recreate that from scratch here. Click Next. Next, it asks what kind of file or source the data is stored in. Exchange Server, a text file, an org plus file, or Excel file, or some ODBC compliant data source. We'll go with the Excel file option and click Next. Next, it asks you to locate the file. Click Browse, navigate to where you've got your Excel data sheet stored, and open it up. Choose your language, and click Next. Now it starts to dig into that file. In this next question, it asks, about three fields in our data. First, where's our name field? 
Each one of these is a drop down, so you can choose any of your fields. The field that you're going to want to choose is either the full name field, or if you don't have a full name field, which I recommend you do, then you would use your last name field. Since we do have a full name field called appropriately and very intentionally name, because that's the name that Visio wants us to use, I'm going to use that. For the reports to purpose or role, I'm going to choose the supervisor ID field. Supervisor ID is the column or field in which we specify the ID number of the person to whom each employee reports, that is, their boss's ID number. This third field, first name, is where you could specify the first name field in case your name field up here did not include first names. If you do choose a field here, as you can read down below, this data would become combined with the data in the name column to create the person's full name. If I chose first name here, then we'd get first name and then first name and last name. So it'd be Tim, Tim Jones. We don't want that. So I'll click Next. Next it asks, what data do you want to actually show in the data shapes, in the shapes on the org chart? Name and title are going to be great. Uh, notice that you could include others, maybe department, by just double clicking. If I decide I don't want department, I could remove it. You can also change the order in which they appear with these up and down buttons. I'm just going to go with name and title and click Next. Then it asks if you'd like to include any of the other data, any of the other fields from your Excel sheet as shape data attached to the shapes in the org chart. What I have found works best here is if you just leave it with the, uh, the five fields that Visio expects to get, those five that I had in bold in the worksheet earlier, name, title, department, telephone, and email, and then you also need your unique identifier field. I called mine employee ID. Okay. The rest of these we'll take care of, don't worry. They'll make it in. We'll be able to see hire date and salary uh, once we get all of the steps completed. But you'll find you get best results if you just go with those five basics plus your key field, your unique identifier field, and click Next. Now, if we had pictures of each employee, we could reference them, which is kind of cool, but I'm not going to since I don't have pictures, and we'll say Next. And then it asks about how you want the uh, shapes to break over pages in your Visio drawing. And since I'm going to try to fit all of this on uh, one or two or three sheets all on the same page, as opposed to separate pages, which in Visio a page it can be one or more sheets of paper, kind of confusing, um, I'm going to go with this first option, letting me specify how the page breaks should lay out. And I'll say Next. And it'll, it'll ask um, how I want the, the pages to go. And I want my, my CEO, Nancy Osborne, at the top, all subordinates beneath her, and all 61 employees. And I know it's going to be a little bit crowded, but um, I, I, I like this result much better than breaking them across multiple pages. Now, if you had hundreds or thousands of employees, then you might want to consider um, breaking it up into multiple pages with each department head at the top of each page, for example. And finally, we'll click Finish. And Visio goes and creates the org chart. In the org chart, Visio did a pretty good job of figuring out which roles to assign to each uh, shape. For example, anybody who has employees was assigned into the position of a manager. We can see that here. Uh, it knows that Nancy Osborne is our chief executive, so she got the executive role. But it, uh, it didn't pick up this assistant abbreviation in the name here, assistant to the president. Fortunately, you can change the position of any one of these shapes by right-clicking and doing a change position type. And I'll say, well, um, Danielle is an assistant to the president or CEO. And now that, um, that shape knows that it's an assistant. However, uh, the layout didn't change. Um, likewise, these three are all at executive level, but uh, because they're CIO, CFO, COO, uh, but it guessed wrong on their positions as well. So I'm going to come up here to change position type and change all three of them at once to also be at the executive level. And their shape uh, appearance changes. Now, here's the magic. 
click this re-layout button here on the org chart tab on the ribbon and watch Danielle, the assistant, move into her appropriate place as the assistant to the CEO. Because we built this org chart based on an Excel sheet of data, the shapes have data associated with them. As you can see when I select a shape and look over the shape data pane. But believe it or not, that data is not tied back to the Excel sheet. So our next major step is to go and import that same Excel sheet as external data and then link it to the shapes. To do so, we go up to the Data tab on the ribbon and click Link Data to Shapes. A wizard appears. What data do you want to use? It's in a Microsoft Excel workbook. So I'll click Next. It asks us to select the workbook or browse for it. I'm going to just peek on this drop-down menu and we'll see that it's probably right there because we used it recently. And click Next. I want to use the data that's on worksheet number one. It's the only sheet in that workbook, so that's easy. And Next. I want to include all columns and all rows. So I'll click Next. And finally, it asks me to identify which field is going to be used as the unique identifier for the rows of data and uh, for the shapes. And that's why we use that employee ID field. That's why we have it in the, in the Excel sheet. And that's why we included it as part of the shape data that came in when we first um, uh, created the org chart. So now we've got employee ID numbers associated with each shape on the org chart and associated with each row of data in the Excel sheet. That's going to be key. So as I leave that employee ID field checked as the uh, unique identifier, I'll click Next and click Finish. And the external data is now associated with this drawing, with this Visio drawing. And yet it's not associated with or attached to any of the shapes. Okay, So what we've got here is the external data pane. It opened up automatically. That external data pane or window can be shown or hidden with this checkbox right here on the data tab on the ribbon. There it's off and there it's back again. As we scroll down we see all 61 employee rows of data, right? But they're not tied to the shapes. Fortunately, we have the wherewithal to tie them to the shapes, as I was just describing. Each row of data has an employee ID number, and each shape has an employee ID number. So all we need to do is say, automatically link. Automatically link will ask us, which shapes do we want to connect to rows of data? Just the selected one or ones, or all the shapes? And of course, I want to use all the shapes on this page. I want to tie them all to their appropriate rows of data and click Next, and then it asks for the, the keys to the relationship. Employee ID, as a column of data in the worksheet, has to have a value in it that matches the value in the employee ID shape data, that's this shape data field over here, and if it does, then we know we've got a, a shape on the drawing that matches that row in the, in the data sheet. I'll say Next, it summarizes what's about to happen, and we'll click Finish. And this is where all the magic is happening, where your shapes are now actually tied to the rows of data in that Excel sheet. Now, you'll notice as I click on a shape that we've got all of those fields, not just the, the five or six basic ones that we had brought in before, but now we have hire date and salary and first name and last name. So all the data from the worksheet now is at our disposal and tied to the appropriate shape. I'll close up. The, uh, you also notice in the external data window, these little chain link icons that indicate that that row is linked to a shape in the diagram. Now I'll close up the external data pane for now. And you'll also see that when you created those automatic links that you got data graphics associated with each shape. I don't care for the data graphics, so I'm just going to select all of the shapes, coming over here to Select All, and then back to the Data tab on the ribbon, and I'm going to set the Data Graphics property to No Data Graphics. There, that turns them off. And that's the hard work. 
So now let's test it. Let's see the, the fruits of our labor here. If we go back into Excel, and we reopen our employee data worksheet, and let's say that we give Nancy Osborne a different salary, maybe it's 325, and we give um, uh, Brenda Swanson maybe a raise as well, 225. Now, forgive me that the higher dates are changing. Um, those are formulas that are being randomly generated. That that's kind of goofy. So sorry about that. That won't happen in your in your situation. Uh, and let's say that we give an email address to somebody that didn't have one before. Here's Dennis Australia. Let's say his email address is Dennis at org.com. All right, so we've entered some data. Uh, let's also say that maybe we delete a record. We delete a row. Uh, maybe we've uh, gotten rid of one of our designers. Poor designers. So we select that row of data, Jennifer Norris, and we're going to delete that row. Okay, there. Now we could also add a new row, but I'm going to hold off on talking about that for a second because that, that's a little bit more of a challenge. I'll go ahead and save the changes, and then we'll switch back into Visio. And to update the data in Visio, you simply go to the Data tab on the ribbon and click Refresh All. Refresh All will bring up this little window here with the progress bar. It's completed. We'll say Close. And we see a refresh conflicts pane appeared over here on the right. The following shapes were linked to rows that were removed from the data source. And it tells us that, uh, yeah, there was a shape that, that uh, used to have a, data, a row of data associated with it. Now that row is gone. It's asking, what do you want to have happen? Well, I want to delete that listed shape or delete all the shapes that are listed here because, obviously, those employees are no longer with us. We want to get rid of their shapes from the org chart. So delete all listed shapes. And it asks, are we sure? And Jennifer Norris is going to disappear from the org chart. And uh, I should have scrolled so we could see that, but I don't know where she is. But you can trust that she is gone. And if we also want to check to see that the other data was updated, we gave Nancy Osborne a new salary of 325000 And there it is. We gave, uh, I think Brenda Swanson had a new salary of 225000 and there it is. All the data from the worksheet has been updated um, in the diagram. Now, the only hard part is adding new employees. Okay? So what's going to happen here is you're going to um, go back into your Excel sheet. You're going to add a new row. Let's say employee number 168 was just hired. Uh, employer number 168 perhaps reports to, he's a, maybe he's a salesperson, he reports to um, Ryan Osborne, our regional sales manager for the um, northern region. So we'll say 152, which is Ryan's employee ID number. And let's say it's uh, Bill uh, Todd. And he's a salesperson, and he works in the sales department, and his phone extension is 192, and yada, yada, yada. Um, and he makes $40,000 a year. Okay, so now we've got a new employee, Bill Todd. I'm going to save the changes to the Excel sheet, switch back over to Visio, and show or refresh the, the external data. Again, get it to wake up and look at that Excel sheet again to see if there have been any changes made. Okay, good, it was completed. Now I'll bring open the external data window and scroll down just to show you that Bill Todd is down there. There he is, and there's no chain link next to his name because he's not linked to any shape in the diagram. Now, Bill is going to be a position, not a manager, not an executive. So over here in the Shapes window, you're going to select the uh, type of shape that you would like him to take when you add him to the diagram. Okay. Then, find some open space in the diagram. I'll come down like so. And you simply drag that row of data from this external data pane into an empty space on the diagram like so. 
Okay? You don't have to line it up or drop it on anybody. In fact, don't drop it on anybody. If you drop the row of data onto an existing shape, it'll change that shape to become attached to or linked to that row of data. Whereas we're trying to create a new shape that's attached to that row of data. There we go. And um, let me zoom in on that a little bit. We can see that it is indeed Bill Todd, right? The data graphic uh, applied automatically as well. I don't like the data graphics personally, so I'm just going to turn that off. They're, they are used for some really cool things, but uh, I'm just not interested in them right now. And then finally, of course, we'd want to connect Bill Todd to his, um, to his supervisor, whom we said was employee number 152, Ryan Osborne. Now, here's a cool shortcut. You can double click on a row in the, in the external data pane, boom, boom, and it will take you to that diagram shape, uh, or that shape on the diagram. Awesome. I would have never found that because he's up in the middle. So now I'm going to zoom way out, keeping my eye on that uh, Ryan Osborne shape. And we'll come zooming way out. OK. And now I can kind of know which one it is. I'm going to close the external data pane so I can see more. And OK, there he is. That's the supervisor. Come down here. I see uh, uh, the new guy, Bill Todd. I'm going to click and drag him up onto Ryan. I think that was the one. And then release, and that creates the supervisor-subordinate relationship between the two. However, and I'll zoom back in, the, uh, the layout is a disaster, right? Because Bill, the new guy, is just laid over top of some shape. Fortunately, however, we learned about that relayout button earlier. And oops, wrong tab. On the org chart tab, you can just hit that relayout button, boom, and it'll solve this kind of problem as well, just like it did with the, uh, the assistant to the CEO earlier. So that relayout, fantastic. If you've created new rows of data, you simply drag the new row into an empty space. It takes on whatever shape you've selected in advance here. Then you drag the shape onto the, uh, the supervisor for that person, and then you hit relayout, and it lays out your org chart just so nicely. All right, I think that's it. Uh, I hope that you have learned a lot from this video and have, uh, uh, will put it to good use. If you like the training that I've provided here, we do this kind of thing every day at our Long Beach, California Training Center, Accelerate Computer Training. We teach Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Visio, Project. We're an Adobe Authorized Training Center, so we teach Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. We'd love to hear from you. Visit our website at www.accelerategovernor.com, and hopefully we'll see you in a class soon. You can attend either in person in Long Beach or remotely from anywhere on the planet. Thanks, and have a great day.